Hey guys, this is Michael at NWA3D, and today we're going to talk about Tinkercad. So on this first screen that you see here with me, it's directly after you log in or create an account. And what this is going to show, it's going to show all your designs you have made. If you haven't made any, it's going to be empty. So what we're going to do first, we're going to go ahead and click on Create New Design. So it's going to bring us into this whole new window. And this window is going to have a lot of information, a lot of things, but we're going to talk about most of them so that we can kind of get a little bit familiar and feel more comfortable. So the first thing I want to talk about is changing the file name. And so in order to do that, we're going to come up here to the top left, we're going to click on it. So what it's going to do, it's going to highlight the entire name it had before. And now we can choose whatever kind of name we would like. And so I'm going to choose my keychain because through this tutorial, we're going to create a keychain for us to use. Okay, once I type in my keychain, make sure that you hit enter so that it saves the name. All right, next we're gonna talk a little bit from left to right on the toolbar. So the toolbar here, we have a lot of information, and so we're gonna have our copy, our paste, duplicate, delete, and undo and redo. A little bit further over to the right, we're gonna have show all, which will show any objects that we may have. We're gonna have group, ungroup, align, and flip. So these are going to be able to manipulate the shapes and objects that we have in order to help us better design. Next, we're gonna have import, which we can import different file types in order to create a already partial, partial design and make it complete. And then we also have export. And this is gonna be for either exporting your file type to import, like we just talked about, or for 3D printing. And then we also have a share if we would like to share it with somebody else. Over here back on the left, we're gonna have a view screen settings. And so this is going to manipulate the work plane or this big object that we have right here in the middle right now. And so if I click on this top corner of the cube, it's gonna rotate what we're looking at. And so as I click around, we can see how it's going to adjust that. And if you click on back or any of the faces, it's going to move it just like so. So I'm gonna go ahead and click home view, which is the next one down. It's gonna bring us right to the front. We also have fit all in view. So if you have an object, it's going to put it all into the area you can see. And then we also have zoom in, zoom out, and a little bit about orthographic or perspective view. So we're gonna leave it in perspective view as this tutorial goes well with it. And now we're gonna talk about a little bit over here under the work plane and ruler. So here on this panel, we have Tinker CAD basic shapes. And so what this actually is, is a drop down box. So there's a lot of selections throughout here and we're gonna use only three of these this time. Next, we're gonna have all of these selections that we can choose depending upon how our drop-down box is selected. So what we're gonna do first is we're actually gonna grab a star. So we're gonna go into the drop-down box and click on it. And then we're gonna scroll down to symbols. It's gonna put us into this next little one. Notice the shapes have changed. And now we can scroll down and we're gonna grab this one, this star right here. Once I click on it once, and I come back over into this work plane area, notice that you kind of see the shadow of it. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And this shadow is going to be where the object will be placed. So notice I zoomed in really easy, but I didn't touch this over here. I used the mouse scroll wheel in order to zoom in. So once we click on the left, Click one more time, it's actually gonna place our star down. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And notice that we see a whole bunch of different things pop up with the star. So let's talk about these. So first over here on the right, we have a new shape window. And this shape window is gonna allow us to kind of move things about or edit our object how we would like. And so we can either choose to lock the editing so we can't change it anymore, or we can hide it and we won't see it anymore, like so. And in order to see it again, notice we on the toolbar we had show all. So we're gonna go ahead and click back on that. 
Okay, so now we're gonna have all of these little things that are surrounding the star. So let's talk a little bit about them. So these white and black boxes that we have here are called handles. And these handles allow us to either drag and move the shape in order to make it bigger or smaller. And then if you click on one of them, you will also see that the numbers pop up and we can change them. And so that's a great way to get the exact value that you may want. So the black handles are the same way, but they only show one value. So it's gonna show only the width if I clicked on this side. It's going to show only the height if I click on this side. Next, we're gonna have this little white one here in the middle. And so this white one here is actually gonna tell us the height of the object. And if I wanted to change that, of course it would get taller. So let's change that to 10 and see what happens. There you go. So we're gonna go ahead and take that back down. Well, let's go ahead and go back down to five. I like five millimeters. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the star a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna zoom out with the scroll wheel again. And now I'm gonna go to the top view. So I'm gonna click on our view cube and I'm gonna go to the top. Okay. And then I'm gonna click on one of these white handles here and grab it. And now I can change these values. So I'm gonna type in 50 on this one and also 50 on this one. So let's go to 50. And if you hit tab or you can select the next option. So there's a tab button on your keyboard. You hit tab, it'll immediately go over to it. We'll type 50 in again. Click enter and then it'll resize the star. So now I can't really see the whole star. So what I'm gonna do is click fit view to selection. And now we can actually see the entire star inside. So there's a couple other things that we haven't explained yet. And that's going to be for one is these little things over here on the side that have these arrows that kind of wrap around. And these wrap around arrows are actually gonna allow us to rotate the object. So if I grab this and I kind of rotate this way, notice that the star moves with me. So if I were to rotate 90 degrees, it'd be upwards. And then if I rotate 180 degrees, it's actually flat on its back again. So we can also rotate in any of the directions that we may want. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of rotate it around to give you the example of it. And go back to zero. All right. Next, we also have this right here. Notice it kind of looks like a Christmas tree. This Christmas tree shape is actually going to allow us to move the star up and down, but not stretch it. So it's actually going to lift it up. So I'm gonna move with my right clicking. I can move the camera around like this. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna grab the little Christmas tree shape or the arrow here. I'm gonna pull it up. Notice that the star lifted up off of the work plane and now it has a shadow. So it's telling me that it's actually not sitting on it. So if I wanna pull it back down, I can grab this one down here on the bottom. Go ahead and pull it back. And now it's resting again, right? Okay, so now to go over the keychain idea a little bit more, we're gonna to have to put some words on it. So I'll, let's make this our keychain and I'm gonna make it my initials. So I want you to make your initials as well. So what we're gonna do for that is we're gonna come back over here to this panel. And we're gonna click on the drop down box. We're gonna select text, which is right above symbols. And then make sure you scroll up so we can see this text right here. It's at the very top. Click on that once and then pull it over and it's gonna show up as that shadow again. And we can select where we wanna put it, but I'm gonna put it right on top of the star even though it's too big. So once I click down, again, we have the black and white handles and then we can also rotate it as we would like. We also have some new options here in this panel. So we're gonna be able to set what the text says here. We can change the font of it. And then we can change how tall it is and also how rounded the words end up being. So I'm gonna change this to MPA, which is my initials. But it's just a little bit too big. So what we're gonna do is if you click on the object and I'm gonna go ahead and grab the handle this time and I'm gonna pull it, drag it. It's gonna resize it for me. 
Once I find a good size that I like, I'm going to let go after left clicking and dragging. Let go of it and I'll leave it at that position. And next, I'm going to click on the object and then if you click and drag it again, it'll actually move it this time. You're just grabbing the object from one of the sides or from the face of it. So it's a little too big. I don't quite like that. I want it to fit inside my star better. So I'm going to again drag the white handle to a smaller size and then click on the object and pull it over a little bit to center it. Cool. So I like that. But maybe I want to change the font. So I'm going to come over here into the panel and click on font. And it pulls a drop down box in. Let's do serif. It's about the same as it was, so let's go to Sans Mono. I like that. That's real easy, real simple. But it's too tall. I don't like how tall it is away from my star. So in order to change that, we can grab the little handle that's in the middle, and I'm going to pull it down. So I want it one millimeter above my star. So remember, we made the star at five, and we can make this one at six. And I think that looks much better. All right, so if I click off of it, you'll notice the shape panel goes away. And I'm gonna go ahead and click home and zoom a little bit back out. So now what we have to do is we need to create a hole for our key chain to go through. And in order to do that, we're going to have to select a new shape. So if I come to the top again, and I'm gonna zoom in with my scroll reel once more, and then right click and pull over the Area. Oh, it's not one. All right. So I went ahead and clicked fit all in view, and now I can rotate again. Okay, what we're going to do next is we're going to click on the drop down box one more time. This time we're going to go to basic shapes. Now we're going to select the cylinder. Because a cylinder, if you look at it from the top, it creates a circle, and we do want to cut a circle into our star. So let's click on that and pull over to our build area. And now that circle's way too big, but let's go ahead and place it down and we can resize it once we do. So I put it down and remember we grabbed the white handles in order to resize it. So I'm gonna click on it once. It's gonna highlight it, make it red. And now we can change this value and I'm gonna make it, let's do five by five. So I use the tab there in order to swap to the other one. And now it's a lot smaller than it was and let's move this into the middle of the top of the star so that we have a circle kind of there. Hmm, it's not quite sitting in the center, so maybe we need to resize it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to change it to 4 by 4 So let's click on the white handle again and change that to 4 by 4 And move it over. Ooh, that looks nice now. So now we have it in the very center at the top. And I like how that looks, but that's not going to be a hole, is it? It's going to just be a cylinder. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to our shape panel and let's select hole. So that's gonna create negative space or take away from. And once we have that, we can go ahead and click off. And now all we have to do is group these objects. And so by grouping these objects, we combine them all into one and we'll see the hole actually be made. So if you click up here and towards the top left or top right and click and drag, you'll see a big dotted box move around your objects and it's going to select all of them. So now we can use our group function here. And once I click on it, it's going to combine all of my objects and notice it took away that cylinder that we had there before, but now there's a hole. And then it also combined the M E and A to the star. So now it's one whole unit. So if yours doesn't quite look like this or you lost maybe your shapes or your words underneath your star, 
you can move your star over to the side to find them. And then you can pull them up or stretch them taller in order to do so. And then make sure you put the hole as negative so that you can actually take away space and not add in a big tall cylinder. So once you have your shape like you want it, then the next part is to export or get ready for printing. And so we're gonna come up here to the top right and click on export. And it's gonna bring up a new box and it's gonna say, what do you want to include? And we're gonna include everything because all we have is our keychain. And we are going to want to download it as a .stl file for 3D printing. So click on that and it'll pull up one more box and it's saying, hey, where do you want to choose this file? Or where do you want to save it? So we're going to click save file and click OK. And it's probably going to save into your downloads folder, but mine saves onto my desktop because I have it set that way. Now we have a file ready to slice and 3D print. So thank you guys for following along and have a good day.